Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today I am here to do the video that I said I would do for you guys. Um, at the end of September, I asked everyone to submit questions that I was going to get to in October. However, I got sick and did not get a chance to complete that video, so I'm doing that right now. So basically, I asked you uh, to ask, or, or what would you like to know about me, or what would you like to uh, me to do a video on, would you like me to have someone on? And the uh, the winner of the vote by one vote, uh, there weren't a lot of votes actually cast, was to uh, answer some questions about myself. Well, with that being said, there weren't also that many questions asked. So I figured I would uh, subsidize what questions people might want to know uh, using Bard, which is like a chat GPT from Google. And I grabbed some questions off there based on what I do and based on who I am. And, and I figured I'd answer some of those questions too. So maybe fill in some of the gaps for you. Um, but uh, one of the questions I actually did receive was, uh, how did I get a... Um, the service provider I use is called BlueDomino.com. BlueDomino.com is a website hosting service. They give you a really amazing deal. Their hosting service is great. I'm not sponsored by them, but I love them. I've been with them for years, and I've recommended them to everyone I've done a project with. And anyone who has decided to go with Blue Domino has been infinitely happy and is still with them to the best of my knowledge. They give you unlimited space. They give you, uh, it's a shared server, of course. It's not, you know, dedicated server, but you get your, your own name on there and that type of thing. So it's, as far as the world sees it, it's, it's a regular server. You get unlimited email addresses and you can brand those email addresses in any way you want. So once you've got your URL, in my case, it's captainenergy.com. I can put, you know, whatever info at captainenergy.com or services at captainenergy.com. And any of those links can be forwarded any way I want to handle them to myself or to someone else who I might have involved in the project or whatever. It's not a super cheap service. It's about 200 bucks a year, I think, is what it ends up costing. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, if you want more information on that, let me know. I will get it to you. But BlueDomino.com is the place I get my service from. And that's how I have my uh, name in the URL and custom email addresses when I need them. Uh, I also use it to host my downloads. So in case you haven't noticed that there's a CaptainEnergy.com slash downloads folder, that's that folder. That's where I have my uh, downloads that I share with you guys. So that's the first question. Next was, how did you get started on YouTube? Well, it's an interesting story because when I first started doing video for the internet, there was no YouTube. YouTube was not born yet. I have been doing YouTube or, or been doing video, educational video and, and, well, and for entertainment video as well since, oh my gosh, maybe 2000-ish. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've been involved in music production and I've been involved in uh, making videos for various training purposes, mostly corporate. So I've been doing videos for a long time and I've been a musician for a long time and I worked for labels and that type of thing back in the 90s and that was pretty cool. But as I got older and realized my uh, my chances to uh, basically do much of with my career that way were, uh, were slipping away uh, and also like being the type of person who likes to help people, I decided to start making YouTube videos when YouTube came along later on. I only started when I turned 50. Up till then, what I had been doing, I used to work in retail and I really enjoyed working in retail and helping people solve their problems. So I would find myself at Best Buy and go in to look at some stuff and see people asking questions, waiting for a salesperson who never came along. And I would literally help the person narrow down their decisions. Basically, I'd qualify their, their needs and I would help them I'd look at the difference systems that were available and knowing computers and, and knowing technology, I was able to point them in the right direction to get them what they needed uh, to accomplish the goal or task that they had in mind. So I would do that with the Macs and then you'd find me on, you know, Saturdays here or whatever, hanging out at Guitar Center and I'd go in to look at some stuff, see if there was anything new and there's not, it's a ghost town over there anymore. Sorry, Guitar Center. I loved you guys, but uh, you kind of been disappointing lately. I'm hoping you pull back on the stick and survive, but we'll see what happens. But I would be in there and people would be trying to get help with something and they'd have three salespeople in the whole store, uh, you know, trying their best to help everybody. And, and then inevitably the person who came along had no idea what the person was looking for. So what I would do is I would say, Hey, you know, I can help you out. I don't work here, but I know recording gear. And I would literally help the person 
again, qualify their needs and find a device that matched what they needed to do. And this came back to basically point at me a few times because I'd go in and I actually heard one person asking one time, where'd that guy go who was here last week? He knew he, he's the one who helped me with this and he was really good and blah, blah, blah. And it was me. I was actually there, happened to be there again. I said, oh, you look for me? Because I remember talking to you last week. He goes, and the guy says, yeah. He goes, I, you, that, that, you know, that sound card, that sound interface that you recommended was really good, exactly what I needed. And now I needed a microphone and I was trying to decide what to get. And so, and the guy who worked at the counter is just like, uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I helped the guy. But anyway, point is that I found myself really enjoying helping people find gear that they like and need and picking technologies and that type of thing for their needs, getting them to where they need to be. There have been several times where I've helped people pick computers for recording and help people set up their equipment. I met uh, someone from Jamiroquai one day at, at Guitar Center who was in there. And they were just in town doing something and needed some some equipment. And again, the guy at the counter didn't know what she was talking about. I happened right there. So I just intervened right there and said, hey, I can help you out if you want help. And the guy said, sure. So I started talking to her and uh, we ended up just, you know, I ended up helping her find what she needed. And she thanked me and you know emailed me and said, perfect. You know, this was worked out great, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's how I got started doing YouTube. I just had uh, a real kind of knack for helping people. And I really enjoy helping people. It was just a good way to give back to the community. When I started, there was no one to give anything. I mean, everything was a trade secret, you know? Now that information is out there, I'm, I'm happy to help provide more information to people to help them get where they want to be. Next question. What inspires me to make my music videos? Well, I don't make music videos per se. I've made a couple uh, because I've been involved in a couple projects where some uh, my friend uh, Mixed Up Music uh, did these competitions or, or uh, challenges, he called them, not competitions because it was no prize, but these challenges where you'd make a song based on a theme and then make a video for the song and i always kind of hated making the videos for those <laughs> sorry man uh i just uh i just want to make music as far as that goes the videos are fine to make but i'm not really a music video guy i'm more of an educational video guy and eh, you know i just did what i had to do so what inspires me though just everything in life my my family my you know instruments new technology i'm very hyped about new technology all the time i love my synthesizers i have so many synthesizers they're so inspiring and people will say oh you don't need synthesizers you know you can just use software and that is 100 percent true you can be 100 percent in the box with a controller and have the neatest little studio ever because all you'd have is a computer a controller and set of monitors maybe a microphone there uh, and as far as organized, you would be super organized, probably, I would imagine. Um, or you could be me, who's got 10 bazillion wires all over creation here. My my room just looks like uh, my, uh, well, my daughter's uh, boyfriend one time said he felt like he was sitting in that box of wires everyone has <laughs> that don't go with anything, but they're, you, know, you keep them anyway. Well... Yeah, that's what this room's a lot like, really, honestly. I've got a lot of things in here. Uh, but, you know, it's just the way it is. I, I'm very inspired by gear. I'm very inspired by software and technology. I mean, music is just the best thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Uh, if you took away music, it just life would just not be worth, you know, living, I feel like, sometimes. But uh, that's just my take, anyway. But so what inspires me? Just everything. I'm I'm always inspired to do something musically, whether it's sound design, writing a song, uh, learning a new instrument, uh, just pluck it around on a, a dulcimer or something and just messing around with sampling and whatnot. I mean, there's just so much you can do uh, that is so much fun and so, I don't know, therapeutic in, in a lot of ways to me, you know? All right, next question. What kind of equipment do you use? Well, I use a lot of different kinds of equipment. I have synthesizers dating back to uh, 1998 officially and technically older because, you know, I have remakes from Behringer and whatnot, uh, though they are not officially as old as they, you know, are. I'll say their soul is older than their body. <laughs> but, uh, 
you know, I mean, I have some some synthesizers that are, are pretty old sounding type thing. I have a lot of different things. Uh, I love right now. I'm on a huge uh, sampler and analog synthesizer kick. My Yamaha CS1X is one of my favorite pieces of gear. Uh, because it has a lot of uh, emotional meaning to me as well as musical as well as oh just it's just got it's got a real story to it for me you know what i mean um but every piece of gear i have kind of has its own little story and i don't know i'm trying to ease up on buying gear because there's just so much of it right now um but uh right now one of the some of the gear that i've been very hyped about uh has been stuff from sonicware Sonicware has been on a tear ever since they brought up the sample track. I've been just like enamored with all their stuff. I mean, not sponsored, but I got a Lo-Fi 12. I've got a Lo-Fi, uh, what's the other one? The six. I've got the texture lab. I've got uh, a couple sample tracks. I've just ordered the sample track, uh, the Lo-Fi 12 version that they have, uh, coming in April. And I've got an ELZ-1 coming. So, I mean, I've got a pretty good collection of Sonicware stuff right now. Yamaha is my all-time favorite manufacturer of synthesizers. Uh, I just love their sound. It is so awesome. CS1X, AM1X, CS6X, Montage, uh, and an M uh, Montage M6 as well. Korg is up there as well. Love Korg gear. Have a couple pieces of Korg hardware. I have all the Korg software. And let's not forget Akai, because Akai, oh man, you guys, I'll tell you, well, Innovation. Akai Innovation got me into the sampling thing. I've been, I was always like, yeah, what do you need a real sampler for? You know what I mean? You got this software that does all the sampling for you. What do I need a real sampler for? That's kind of just pointless. And then I went and bought myself Innovation um, circuit ry- rhythm, yes. I bought myself the circuit rhythm, and I thought this thing is pretty awesome. And then I bought myself an MPC, uh, the MPC one. Now I've got MPC key sixty one, an MPC one, and a couple of Akai forces. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I went from uh, not interested to all in, if you know what I mean. Uh, the Akai force, I think, is one of the super underrated pieces of gear from Akai. It is just, oh my God, that thing is so great. I mean, it's my favorite piece of Akai gear. Uh, I'd rather have it than any of the MPC, honestly, any of the MPC line. Except, well, except for the for the Key 61, because I love the fact that it's a keyboard format and the keyboard on this thing feels so damn good. Uh, that should answer my what kind of gear do I use question. All right, uh, how do you edit your videos? Well, when I edit my videos, I record my videos using OBS mostly because I don't like memory cards. Um, I know that sounds weird maybe. When I record my videos in-house, I generally have my cameras hooked up directly to my PC and I use OBS and I record directly onto the hard drive. Now the reason I do this is to save the time and trouble of importing the video later. Now in a way I probably should use cards because I could record as much as I want to the card, then copy the one file I needed over to the hard drive and not wear, put as much wear on my solid state drives. But I just, you know, that's, I bring my video in that way. I'll dump it all off. Then I use the remux feature, spit it out as an MP4. And then I usually, I've only recently switched back to Premiere uh, from Adobe because we're, I'm using it more for work now. Um, so... You know, I figured I might as well use it more and be more intimate with it than I have been. Uh, so I've been using that again. But before that, I had been using one called uh, Caden Live, K D E N Live, and it is a an open source video editor software. Caden is awesome. I love it. I think it's great, and it's it's got everything you need to make videos with, edit videos with, uh, without all the fluff and all the you know, whatever that uh, makes all these other editors work. Also, I mean, you can do even animation with it. You can do layers and, and create, you can do basically everything you can do with something higher end and it's hundred percent free. However, it is limited in some ways. So, you know, you get the good with the bad. It's not bad though. I like it a lot. And as far as other animations and whatnot, I was using Adobe animate 
to do some of that, but I had been recently, like I said, using using Caden Live to do my animation stuff. And now that I'm back to Premiere, I'll be using After Effects, uh, which I have some experience with. And Illustrator and Photoshop I've been using forever, so yeah, I'm, I'm good with those as well. I kind of wish Affinity would bring out... Uh, company that makes Affinity uh, Photo and Affinity Designer would bring out an animation application and a video editing application because that would round up their whole suite and uh, yeah I would use that and, and I would abandon Adobe completely. I don't personally like paying for stuff forever. I don't mind paying for upgrades. I do mind paying subscription. Mental note for you recent studios. Just saying, just saying. Anyway, what's my favorite video I've ever made? Well, my favorite video that I've ever made, man, that's a tough one. Uh, this was an actual question. I think probably my favorite video I've ever made, man, I'd say it's probably some of my, my uh, videos with uh, multiple devices type thing, like the ones where I do the syncing multiple little devices together and, and making music kind of dollless uh, type stuff. I also think that my, my Reason videos with combinators that I make for you guys are pretty fun to make those are right, right up there yeah i mean that's pretty much my those are probably my favorites if i were to pick it's hard to pick at this point because there's just so many darn videos i've made at this point um I'll, oh you know what one of my favorite ones is that actually and i was really excited about this was i made one for a product called sample robot and sample robot the company actually put it on their website and i was like yes my first video ever but used by a manufacturer the guy didn't get anything for it but it was nice to to kind of receive a little recognition like that you know somebody who makes a product actually knows who i am and uh put me on their website as one of the you know videos that kind of was inspiring to people to use their product i thought that was neat what's your biggest challenge as a youtube musician well, I'm I'm more of just a YouTuber who is a musician, but uh, my biggest challenge on YouTube is getting people to subscribe. Uh, I really wish I could get more people subscribing. I see the number of people who go to my site and look at my videos and all that, and the number of subscriptions are just not there. And I I try so hard to make these videos good for you guys. I just wish more people would like and subscribe to the videos. It would really help me out if you would. So if if you're on the fence, uh, please. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Um, what are my goals for the YouTube channel? My YouTube channel, I would love to see grow. I would love it to get more subscribers. And I would like to eventually turn it into a... I'll call it a small business, I guess, of sorts. Uh, but I mean, I would like to put some sample packs out and and uh, some some of my patches and such. I mean, I give away a lot of combinators right now, but I make a lot of combinators that I don't give away. And I would love to be able to sell those for you know a couple dollars, just to make some something out of this. Because I mean, I do spend hours and hours, like my Halloween combinator that I put out. Uh, and I gave away and I got a lot of positive response on that thing took me like 12 hours to craft the sounds for it and sample it and bring it all, bring it all together and make it real. I also did all the graphic design for it and the setup for it. I mean, so there was a lot to that and, uh, I, you know, it'd be nice to get a few dollars back here or there. Donations are always accepted. I appreciate that. I have my coffee and I have some merch. I'm going to design some new merch, which I will put up there to see if anybody's interested in that. If there's something you'd like to see for merch, let me know also if you want t-shirts or whatnot. I've been thinking of doing some uh, some t-shirts with, with gear, images of gear on it, drawn um, images. I'm also an artist, by the way. I do a lot of graphic design and a lot of... Uh, I sketch and illustrate and, and paint and such. So... That's just a thought. But anyway, that's, you know, goals as far as I would like to grow the channel into a small business. I mean, something that I can do when I'm retired for fun and for a few dollars here or there. I'm not looking to make a living off of it, but it would be, yeah, it'd be cool to be able to make enough money to, 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 you know, go out to dinner once in a while with my wife off of it. That'd be nice or something or money to buy new gear so I could review it for you guys. Cause you know, this gear ain't cheap kids, <laughs> you know, as you probably know, um, how do you balance your YouTube channel with your other commitments? <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I literally probably pour my entire weekends into YouTube most of the time. Um, 
and then I go on and watch other people's broadcasts throughout the week, mostly at night. Like Av, uh, Av McCree, he's, he's actually a friend of mine at this point, I would say. We're, we're kind of, you know, actual real-life friends. Um, I, I try and support his channel as much as I can, and other people's channels as well. Like I mean, like Kebu. I love Kebu. He, that, that dude, uh, I don't know his actual name. He's amazing. K-E-B-U. Look him up. He's done so much great electronic music. He's just, he's amazing. He's surrounded by keyboards and, and playing them all like real time type thing. Uh, he does, you know, sequencing, but it's all played out. It's not like it's, uh, he's not sitting at a, you know, Cubase or something, drawing notes in type thing. Like a lot of these people I see making music, he actually has like a sequencer that he records all the music into for real. Uh, and it's, it's pretty awesome to watch. It's quite the experience and he's super, super talented. Ricky Tinez, I, I love his channel. Um, Cameron, as in Venus Theory, who doesn't like Cameron? He's a he's a great dude. Brian Funk, he's one of the guys who actually got me doing this because his inspiration was what got me to actually take the step and make this happen. Mm, there are just so many people. I mean, I can't even talk to Mix. Oh, Elbow Media. How can I forget Marcus Elbow? Marcus is the man. I love El I love Marcus. Uh, Direct pro, uh, direct productions is that what he? I think that's what it is. He does these. What what had happened was videos. Love those videos so much. So how do I balance my YouTube channel with my other commitments? Well, uh, basically I work, I do YouTube, and I work out, and my family. Those are my four main things, and that's pretty much it. That's all. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I just do it. I just go. Um, balance, not so sure I'm good at balancing, but I, I do find a way to get it all done most of the time. So, <laughs> um, it's not easy. It's what helps a lot is having a, a partner, a, a spouse, wife, whatever you've got, or, uh, a friend or whatever, who is supportive. And my wife has been awesome as far as supportive throughout my entire life with my music stuff with um whatever stupid idea i had at the time honestly <laughs> i mean you know you know she'll kind of rein me in when she needs to but at the same time she does give me uh enough rope to you know hang my no just kidding <laughs> she gives me enough of uh like room to like try things um as far as new ideas businesses and that type of thing for the most part She's always been there for me, and and uh, and I really appreciate that about her. So, thanks, son. Um, my kids are great, and you know, at this point, they're basically grown up. So, you know, my commitments are down, if you would. So, it's easier to get things done at this point. What are your plans for the future? My plans for the future. First, I want to get a flying car. No, I'm just kidding. No, the uh, my plans for the future are basically uh, to well, first. I need to optimize my studio a little bit more and uh, get rid of some of the gear that I have. I have got too much stuff at this time. Um, and I'm trying to decide the best way to do that. Um, but, you know, figure that out after. Uh, and grow the channel and continue to do tutorials on new software, new hardware. And, um, you know, hopefully grow the, my, my uh, subscribership uh, and, uh, get more fans and that type of thing so that we can, you know, grow this channel and more people will know who I am. Maybe I can get more questions and help more people. That's pretty much my whole, my whole thing. What's your favorite thing about interacting with fans on YouTube? Oh man, that's kind of a tough one. Um, I, I do love helping people. So my favorite thing is just the kind of like joy of uh, being able to make recommendations and help people solve their problems. It's, it's wicked fun to me. And I mean, you'll find me at, uh, you know, it could be two in the morning sometimes and I'll be, I'll get up for a minute to, you know, whatever, go grab a drink or whatever, two in the morning or three in the morning. And I'll notice that I got a text message and it'll say, Hey, uh, blah, blah, blah. What cable should I use for this? And I look at my phone, and I'm just like, oh, let me just answer this real quick. I mean, you just never know. I mean, I'm I'm usually right on the responses. If you've ever asked me a question, you probably have seen that I respond pretty quickly. As long as I have time. If I'm sick and, like, in bed, whatever, then that's another whole problem altogether. But, you know, whatever. 
What's the most memorable experience you've had as a YouTube musician? Well, I wouldn't call it uh, as a YouTube musician, but I'll, I'll tell you one of the most... <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but uh, one of my subscribers gave me... It was the first time anyone's really given me anything, per se. Um, but I got a donation for a subscriber on my coffee account, and I was over the moon, believe it or not. And it was like a $5 donation or something. Uh, so it's not like it was like a life-changing number or whatever, but it was awesome. I couldn't, I was like, wow, somebody actually gave me like a donation to put you with the channel. Because I've put so much money and so much time into this channel, and that was the first time anyone's given me anything back. Um, so it was pretty awesome. And I mean... I mean, I remember doing a bunch of different things. Oh, my gosh. Let me think. Most memorable experience I've had as a YouTube musician. Well, uh, hitting 100 subscribers. That was enormous to me. Hitting 500? Holy cow. When I hit 1,000, I, I couldn't believe it. Now I'm like, uh, you know, just over 1,300, which isn't like huge. I'm not, you know, Mr. Beast or nothing. But that's pretty awesome to me. You know what I mean? That I've got that many people out there who actually care enough to hear what I have to say. I think that's awesome. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? This is my last question. Uh, the best piece of advice I've ever received is um, if there's something you want to do, don't let people tell you that you can't do it. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, I've had adversity in this whole YouTube thing. I've had adver adversity as a musician. I've had adversity in computers. When I was a kid, I got my first computer when I was about 10. And uh, my father... Just was like, what do you want that stupid thing for? You know, get a real job. Computers aren't going to be anything. And as you can see, he was 100% correct. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, I'm used to cutting against the grain, if you will. I, I should say I've had a very short span of my life where I was the cool guy. You know what I mean? I was the nerd in high school and junior high. And then I, uh, you know, got into exercise and fitness and that type of thing. And then I was, then I was cool. And now I'm a dad. And of course I suck because <laughs> what parent, it doesn't suck. Apparently, you know, uh, you know, your kids eventually kind of, you know, even if they love you, they kind of, mm, I don't know. So just stick to your guns, do what you think is right. And everything will turn out eventually, even if. Uh, it takes longer than you think it's going to. Because, I mean, it's all about what you really want to do. You know, it's all about your passion. And if you are passionate about something, you shouldn't let something else stop you from doing that. I'm passionate about making music. I'm passionate about helping people. I'm passionate about sound design and synthesizers and technology and computers. And I'm never going to stop working with those things and helping people understand them. So that's it. Uh, that's pretty much all the questions. If you have anything else you'd like to know about me, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you all in the next video and have an awesome day. Bye for now.